You've been asked to pick up the ransom money in a very high-profile kidnapping. It's a huge amount of money, and there may be many people with an interest in the outcome. What's your plan? How do you survive to pick up the money, collect it, and then live happily ever after? That's the question I'll ask you today watching, and I'll tell you how I thought I got around the problem. Hello, this is David McMillan here, and I was about to start recording some thoughts on something people wanted to know, and that is the art of disappearing, the art of going off-grid and underground. But my mind has been triggered by something else. Last night I was watching Netflix and All the Money in the World. It's a series about the kidnapping of John Paul Getty Jr. in Rome. I think what was... Uh, the 70s, I think. Of course, the rich old man, the billionaire, didn't really want to pay, but he didn't want to be made a, a fool of. He never did. Anyway, the series is quite good, and the lead, Christopher Plummer, who replaced Kevin Spacey, who'd, uh, well, after filming had started, had disgraced himself by being uncovered as having groped a couple of young boys. It happens to a lot of... Uh, public people these days. You can imagine having your whole career ruined by just a grope. Well, it happened. But all the money in the world is quite worth watching, but it triggered a memory in me. Yes, it triggered a memory in me of a kidnapping, or well, almost a kidnapping, and of Lebanon many years ago. I'd been called there by some old friends I'd known from uh, the mid to late 70s, and we met in the seaside resort town of Jeune, which, despite all the civil war, was pretty much kept untouched by some kind of strange, unspoken agreement. Anyway, we met and they unveiled their plan and their problem. Now, this is a problem I'll put to you, my dear viewers, because I want your solutions to the problem. Because it's not an easy one. In a kidnapping, how do you collect the money? And how do you keep able to spend it? The plot that my villainous Lebanese pals wanted to hatch involved the kidnapping of a very high-profile billionaire. Well, his son, in fact. Of course, I'll tell you who it was, because the kidnapping never went ahead, but that's not the issue here today. It was to be Lachlan Murdoch, the son of Rupert Murdoch, the billionaire media giant. Now, you can imagine how that would have gone down. Of course, Lachlan was nowhere in Lebanon at the time, and their plan was to pick him up somewhere in Europe, because he was due to travel there. My old Lebanese chums were pretty much hardened after the Civil War, uh, as I guess was everybody. So it was nothing about the actual kidnapping itself, but it was how to collect the money. And that's always been the problem with kidnappings. Sure, um, tradition has it that the kidnappers ask for used, unmarked bills, as though anybody would accept money marked with big red X's on them. And, of course... I think there were even bits of money that had radiation on them or hidden dyes. Kidnappers were alert to that. But they never really seemed to have any better idea than running the bagman around town or uh, getting him to go some unusual place and drop the money off. I recalled a ransom being paid, well, almost paid once again, in Australia, it was uh, bombings on Qantas aircraft. I think that was the threat. Anyway, uh, the kidnapper had gone to the trouble of learning how to scuba dive, and his instructions for the delivery of the money was for someone to take it to the end of a pier and then pick up a radio. The radio would have then said, throw the money off the pier. And the idea was that he would pick it up underneath. 
Well, the plan didn't go too well. Of course, the area was surrounded by police, and um, I think bubbles were noticed. Second to that, he hadn't really... <laughs> he hadn't helped himself by giving the instructions that the money should be in a bag loaded down with rocks. Um, and instructions to go to the beach, I think that gave the authorities a bit of a clue, don't you? But here, let's get back to Lebanon and how to collect the ransom money for media mogul son, Lucky Lachlan. Now, I'm not going to give you my solution, the one I offered, straight away. I'll let you, if you wish, put some of your solutions down below. But bear in mind the difficulties of collecting ransom. You know that the police will probably be involved. But the richer the target, the richer the person paying, the more likely it is that private people will be involved, and probably more ruthless. Certainly in the case of Rupert Murdoch, well, if I was him, I would be so enraged by having someone in my family kidnapped, I certainly wouldn't mind paying the... Um, it was 15 million US dollars they wanted. I certainly m wouldn't mind paying that, but I'd be damned if I'd let the kidnappers get away with it, and I'd be happy to pay three times that to any group who could bring it out an end as quickly and as mercilessly as possible to the kidnappers of my son. Bearing that in mind, their first suggestion that the money be brought by ferry over from Cyprus to Lebanon had to be ruled out, because in Lebanon you'd have to keep in mind where would the rich billionaire then turn. He would turn to those groups in Lebanon who knew their way around, and they were pretty vicious indeed. After all, this is a country which had had years of war in lots of factions, and some of them having to fight harder because their numbers were fewer. No, all the groups pretty much knew each other, and if one had been instructed to go and find the kidnappers, well, they probably would have, no matter where they went. Uh, just to give you an idea of the, the scene in Lebanon at the time, oh, and, and somewhat after that, you may recall that Western hostages were routinely taken. Terry Waite. Terry Waite, was he an archbishop? Anyway, he was kidnapped in Lebanon, and so were several academics from American universities, and a CIA man was actually grabbed by, I think, one of the Islamic groups. But there were plenty of uh, Christian terrorists around at the time. I remember seeing some playing mandolins over the machine gun bodies of their well, the people they didn't like. And keep in mind, too, what the Russians had done when one of their number, one of their diplomats, had been kidnapped in Lebanon. They didn't worry about ransoms. They didn't do anything else of the kind. No, within 48 hours... Ah, oh yes, it was Hezbollah. Within 48 hours, a plane landed from Moscow and several huge slabs of meat, I guess, in suits, strolled off and went into town. Where did they go? They went to the political headquarters of Hezbollah. Now, it was the military wing that had kidnapped the uh, Russian diplomat. So, notionally, nothing to do with the political wing. But do you think the Russians cared? Not at all. They went to the offices of uh, Hezbollah, grabbed the top man from there, took him away, and they castrated him. Well, they returned the eunuch back to the... Well, he ended up in the hospital, of course, but they returned the eunuch, and guess what? The Russian diplomat was freed the next day. I had to advise the would-be kidnappers that uh, trying to have the money brought to Lebanon would only make more problems, not less. And they had toyed with the idea of, well, why don't we get the ransom money in gold or some other valuables? Well, what, oil paintings? Postage stamps? No, their, their photos and their numbers, everything about such things would be so well known, you'd never unload them. And gold? Well, it's heavy. It doesn't make for a good quick swap. Well, 
I came up with a solution for them. And if you, viewers, can think of a solution to collect the ransom money, well, great. And if it's one that I can't pick any holes in, and I, I won't be just nitpicking for the sake of it, then it'll be my hat off to you, and I'll send you a free book. But um, if you guess my solution to it, I'd be very surprised. And there'd be a special treat there. Yes, yeah, a little snowstorm in July, I guess, or some of the weather condition. Anyway, uh, right, so put your thinking caps on, um, you armchair criminals out there, and tell me a way how to pick up the money, how to pick up the money that will be photographed, how to pick up the money that will be trailed by a small army of detectives, how to pick up money that will be in a case that has without doubt got at least one radio transmitter, knowing that you'll find it, and then in some other device there'll be another radio transmitter. Yes. You'll have to think ahead, but I'll give you a clue. You want something where the people following you and following the bagman with the money will be convinced that they are in fact one step ahead of the game and they know what you're going to do but you do something different. Confusing? Well, I didn't say it was going to be easy. So, oh, uh, let's just pause for a moment for a word from our sponsor. And the sponsor's just me. Uh, there's no YouTube advertising on my stuff. That's the small advantage of being an untouchable, a leper in the media world. Just listen to this then. Well, Carol, God, what to write. Okay, for you. If Frank had worn white that night and you'd left at Malta, then the next decade would have meant comfort and a better life. Yeah, that's for your book. How many shopping days left till Christmas? Or really, how many panicking days before Christmas? Well, what to get that difficult friend? Or what to get yourself? There's still just time to get a signed copy of Unforgiving Destiny, in which I'll write something about you, personally. All you have to do is tell me. Contact me at davidmcmillan.net on the contacts pages. We'll work something out. Just in time for old Saint Nick. Yeah, well, I don't know why I started this book signing thing. It's been interesting. I've had a lot of uh, a lot of information and made a few new friends and touched with a lot of people and uh, I hope written pertinent things to them. And by the way, thanks Richard from Leeds who sent me some pictures of Nana Plaza in Bangkok. I'd asked him, because he was travelling there this week, to tell me what the place looked like after 30 years. It was the last place that I was a free man in Thailand. I collected um, some money from an old friend. I was in a hurry going through town, picked up the 50,000, and did I get away? No, there was an unhappy outcome. And then two years later, a happier outcome as I escaped from the Bangkok jail. But uh, luckily, Google Earth didn't exist back then, or I'm... <laughs> I, no, I guess I would have been scared, but not scared off. That's true. Right. What kind of criminal would you make? How's your thinking going on the ransom problem? Put your answers down, and I will... Uh, I will, I will read them back, and we'll see how far you got. Did you get the money? Did you get arrested? Did you get shot? We'll see.